Mastering audio is not an easy thing. And if you've ever tried to master your music yourself, I'm sure you have gotten to a point where you were endlessly adjusting things, not quite sure if things sound better or worse. And I think a big problem is that there's so many options of plugins to use for mastering. It's so easy to fall into the trap where you try to load up something else thinking it's going to give you a different result. And it really just does more of the same thing. And in this video, I'm going to show you that you can get away with mastering your music using really only one plugin. And that one is Abbey Road's TG Mastering Chain by Waves. I'm going to show you my approach for bringing this song to life. And I hope it's something that you can take back to your studio and use on your music. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. I help music creators make better sounding music. I also have an awesome Facebook community that you should check out. It's called the Home Studio Fast Track. It's filled with awesome producers, mixing and mastering engineers, and music creators from all over the world. And if you're looking to level up your music, you should definitely stop by. There's a link in the description. So the song we'll be mastering today is by a band called In Your Memory. They're from the Washington, D.C. area. Awesome group of people. Uh, definitely check them out and support them if you like what you hear. They have some killer music coming out. My buddy David Andreas recorded, mixed, and produced this track. So shout out to him for doing an awesome job. So let's get started. I'm just going to play the original. Cool. All right. This, that gives us a good idea. So to get going, um, I just have the Abbey Road's TG mastering plugin. Um, and this is in its default state. Just load it up. Let's talk about what this plugin actually can do for your music. So it has a bunch of different modules, which is really nice. So you don't need a bunch of extra plugins. You have everything you need to sculpt the tone and lock in a groove right in this plugin. This first input section here um, has a few different options. A lot of these you probably don't want to mess with, but it's interesting to just try it out. This tape equalizer, according to the Waves manual, basically applies a filter to flatten out the, fre the frequency spectrum. So typically for a digital mix, you don't really need this. You can leave it at flat, but I love just checking out the different options to see if there's something that really resonates with the track. Okay, so let's just give it a listen. I will just switch between these few different settings. And actually, this 7.5 IP setting on this, I really like what that did to the song. It brightened it up. It cleaned up some of those low mids that were making it muddy. Um, so let's just bypass that and hear what it what it does before and after. Right, it just sounds a little bit more exciting now. Um, definitely like this. So these different settings all deal with phase. More often than not, it's not going to be beneficial to mastering. It might be useful in a mixing scenario, but I just stay away from this stuff. I'll, I'll show you what it does, though. Not really that useful for what we need to do for this particular song. So the next three modules here, we have this, we have tone, limiter, and filter. These can all be exchanged and moved around, which is really nice. So what I actually like to do is I'll, I like to have the filter first and the limiter last. This way we can do all of our correction and then feed it to the limiter and then really glue everything down and then basically set the final level and we're done, okay? All of these little knobs up here, these buttons, this means stereo, duo, and then mid-side. So despite it having a simplistic interface right here, you can adjust all the nitty-gritty details back here. So if you want to do some mid-side stuff, which we probably actually will, you can just choose mid-side and then it breaks up into the mid and side channels. So now you have control over all that. 
It's pretty amazing. All right, so for this track, let's adjust some of these filters. So this first filter is basically just a low pass EQ. You have a high pass EQ section. And then you also have this presence area. So this is just a, like a broad EQ lift it, at these different frequency settings. A lot of these are very useful if you need to maybe add a little bit of perceived loudness to a mix. Um, this can be really, really helpful. So let's dial this in. Let me turn this back to stereo. I think I would just leave it at the high setting. I really don't want to take too much away. So the only two options I, I see for the high pass would be 40 or, or the low setting. This song just kind of has a cool groove to it. Dave did an awesome job locking everything in for us. So I'm actually, now, I'm going to keep it at its lowest setting. All right, so let's, let's see if we can add a little bit of sparkle to this to make this track pop a little bit more. I love it. I mean, that the, the EQ section on this is so nice. It's so gentle. So you can't really like do too much damage, which is really, really nice. Because on a parametric EQ, you can go crazy with that and totally destroy a master. So let's do a little before and after and bypass, make sure we're not missing anything. It's really starting to open up now. All right, let's get into this tone. So this is the, the EQ section. Again, we can do stereo, duo, mono, or mid-side. So there's a few things I'm noticing with this mix right now. I think the cymbals are a little bit too bright, especially as we start approaching this limiter. It's just going to exaggerate how bright they are. And then I feel like the vocals and um, some of the guitars are a little bit fatiguing in this like three to 4K region, it tends to build up for this style of music and it's always nice to do a little dip there to kind of soften it a little bit. We don't want to take too much away, otherwise we're gonna lose that aggression, okay? And then also there's a little bit of mud in like the low mids, somewhere between 200 and 500 Hertz. We're gonna to want to scoop some of that out. Just something like right around here sounds good to me. All right, let's uh, try to find those annoying frequencies in the guitar and the vocal. A good way to approach this is to overdo the EQ so you're boosting into the, the song and then find that spot that you're hearing, get really exaggerated, and then you know you're in the right range, okay? And then we'll cut there. There it is, right there, right away. You can hear it, clear as day. So let's let's pull some of this out. I think we took out a little bit too much, so we're gonna put a little bit back in. Cool. Um, now, if we can find that mud that I'm hearing in those low mids, it's gonna make the top end feel a lot brighter and open it up a little bit more. So let's try to do the same strategy in that region and find that muddiness and get rid of it. And I forgot to mention this, these different settings here, this is a low shelf, this is a blunt Q, meaning like a really broad shaped EQ. Medium is a medium sized Q. Sharp is just like it says, we're starting to get to like more of a notched type thing. So this would be for more surgical EQ and then high stands for high shelf. So you can adjust this depending on what your goals are. So if we're trying to get rid of stuff, it might make more sense to have a sharper EQ rather than a, a blunt one that's usually a little bit more beneficial for tone shaping. Okay, so when we're going to go dig out these low mids, we're probably going to put it to, to the sharp. All right, 
right. So here's what here's what I'm noticing. I really like that frequency in the guitars, and it seems to primarily be in the vocals, which is dead center. So let's go to the the back end of this plugin, and let's get into the mid side mode. So I'm gonna leave leave this set to zero for both of these, and we're gonna pull out that mud just out of the center channel. We're gonna leave it on the sides for the guitars. So let's see what that would sound like. Sounds awesome. And that gives the power to the guitars, doesn't mess with them. That's exactly what we needed to do. Okay, so we can come back in here. And then uh, let's, let's see if the low end could use any help. Maybe we could give it a little bit of a lift. But we got to be careful because this is a little bit faster song, so you don't want a lot of low end energy in a fast song because it's gonna it's gonna consume the majority of our available loudness. Okay, so but I want it. I, I do want it punchy and I want it groovy still. So we'll leave it like this right now. We'll go to the limiting stage, see what we can do. If it gets too loud, we can come back here and dial it back. All right, so here's the final module for TG Mastering Chain. Uh, we have, so this is the limiter section. We have three different algorithms essentially for the, the style of compression. Modern seems to be, if you're working on any modern style of music, it keeps it bright, aggressive kind of sounding. Um, the original is a little bit darker, vibier. So if you have some stuff with a little bit more attitude, maybe that would be a cool uh, option. For me, it lives on the modern setting. I don't ever take it off of that. Recovery is going to be our release time. So we can adjust that groove in the pump of the compression. Ratio is just essentially it's the threshold. I guess you want to think of it like that. It just dictates how much of this limiting or compression we're going to be doing. And then we have a mix knob. So this is this will allow us to do parallel compression or parallel limiting, which is also very helpful. So if we want a nice transparent sound, we can just dial the dial this mix knob back. Okay. And then they have a sidechain filter, which I think is actually really, really helpful. Um, this allows us to bypass some of the low frequency information that we have in the song so that the compressor isn't working too hard. Okay, we'll let we'll just leave that stuff alone, and then the compression will be a little bit more musical and not so selective to the bass drum. Okay, it'll be more representative of the music as a whole. So before we adjust our sidechain, let's get a good compression going and a good vibe using this limiter, and then we'll go in the back end to the extended controls and then dial in that high pass filter to minimize the amount of pumping we're gonna be experiencing. So again, we want to be able to feel and hear the movement. So let's be really aggressive with the compression up front. We'll do a ratio of 100, but we'll dial that way back a little bit later. And then we'll adjust these recovery times to find a, a spot where it's kind of vibing right. So the lower the number, the faster the release. Um, and the, the bigger the number, the longer the release. And basically, if you have like a faster song like this, we're probably going to want to stick to those lower numbers, maybe two, one, two, or three, something like that. If you start getting too long, it's going to get kind of pumpy, and you, you'll start losing the groove, or, or the groove will be confusing. Yeah, I'm digging this three. Okay, cool. Um, so let's adjust this ratio. We have this gain reduction meter. We're doing like 15 dB a gain reduction. Not great. <laughs> it sounds pretty good, but I think the song would benefit if we backed it off a little bit. Somewhere right in here, I tend to like the sound of a pumpy groovy song so i'm usually really aggressive with this 
Um, so I'm going to leave it where it's sitting here because it feels good to me, but it's too much. And that's where this mix knob is my savior because I can dial this back and now it's acting in parallel. So that allows us to have that original dry, clean, not too pumpy signal. And then we're just bringing up that, that pumpy, like enhancing groove signal. And it's just going to help gel everything together and really bring the song to life. Right there. So let's just dial this back a little bit so it's not reacting so much to that kick drum. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking that right there. Cool. All right. So we have one more little module, and this is where, like, the magic happens. So we have a bunch of different options here for how we want to hear the song being played back. We have mid here. We have sides. We have mono, stereo, and then we also have left and right. So whatever you want to hear. I mean, that's your entire monitoring section. Like, you can do anything you want there. Uh, something that I really like is this spreader knob. This just kind of opens everything up. I'm, I don't think it's just increasing the gain on the side channel. It sounds like it's doing a little bit something else, but it really helps to spread things out and make things a little bit wider if it feels congested. So I still think this mix is a little congested sounding. So let's just dial this thing up a little bit and then it'll really open up this mix. Way too much, right? But like right there, there's this, it's, it's beautifully spread out. Everything still feels connected. We don't have any holes. It doesn't sound like the sides are wrapping around our head or anything. So that's basically it. This song is essentially mastered. Now we just need to throw uh, a, like a, your favorite limiter on there and bring it up to level. Okay, so we're gonna level match everything. So I'm just gonna use Waves L2 because everybody loves that thing. All right, so let's see, let's see how loud we can get this. I'm gonna leave the output volume at minus 11 so it doesn't blow out your ears. And secondly, that's about the level that the original version of the song was mixed at. So then when we do the AB comparison, they should be gain matched. So it'll be a better, more fair comparison. But let's crank this. Let's see how loud we can get it and while it still sounds good. I think that sounds pretty good. I just had to make a few tweaks to the output ceiling and the threshold here just to make sure that when we compare it to the mix, it's level matched. Okay, so here we go. Let's go. We'll start with, we'll start with the mastered version first, then we'll go to the original and come back, okay? Again, these are level matched, so whatever sounds better probably is better. All right, here we go. Man, it, it's a good plugin. You can hear how everything just kind of gelled together. The snare has a lot more punch and body. It doesn't sound disconnected. Vocals got brought forward. The guitars are now big and wide. It's full sounding. It's amazing how much you can do with just that one plugin. Now, if you can't afford this plugin, that's totally understandable. And to help you on your journey to mastering your music, I have a free downloadable ebook on all of my favorite free plugins that I found and I use in my sessions all the time. A link to that download is in the description. I have suggestions for free plugins that cover 
pretty much every single category of plugins out there, including compressors, EQ, limiters, saturators, distortion. There's even some cool effects ones and amazing section on reverb. And again, that is 100% completely free to you. If you're still with me, thank you so much. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, let YouTube know this video is awesome, and then hit that subscribe so you don't miss a single video. I have new videos coming out every single week. I really appreciate your time today, and I hope to see you in the next video.